Hello everyone, I hope you're having a fantastic day. In this video, I'm going to show you 7 extremely overpowered builds that you probably don't know yet. With each one of all these monstrous creations, you will be able to break the game and make your way to the DLC like it was a walk in the park. These builds might not be the most popular options out there, but they are insanely broken, stylish and really easy to use as well. I'd say that a lot of the builds listed on this video are better than some others I've covered before. If you have any question about any build, I will be answering in the comment section as soon as possible. First of all, in the 7th place we have the All Demolisher, one of the most fun builds I have tried in this game so far. Plenty of you guys asked me to create a Knight Rider Glade build, but I didn't expect the amazing performance this weapon has. I also noticed that a lot of players use this weapon with Flame Strike as of War, and I have to be honest, it's good, but if you use this weapon with the spinning strikes, you will have a really powerful helicopter build going crazy and destroying all bosses in seconds. This build is really amazing because it allows you to buff your weapon with any element you want. In this case, I use Blood Flame Blade because I love that spell, but you can use whatever weapon buff you want. The thing is that with Blood Flame Blade you will build up bleed and deal fire damage at the same time. The Knight Rider Glaive must be upgraded to plus 25 with the spinning strikes as of war on the heavy affinity. And we are going to use the Claw Mark Seal to get the most out of Blood Flame Blade and to cast our main buffs. I'm going to be using the Beast Champion Armor Set with the Scale Gauntlets to have enough poise so my attacks won't get interrupted. But as I always tell you, the armor set you prefer is just fine. The most important talismans for this build are the Ritual Sword Talisman, the Millicent's Prosthesis, the Rodent Windsor Insignia and the Shard of Alexander. However, a very good alternative is the Lord of Blood's Exultation. You can replace any talisman you don't want to use with this one. In the Physic class, the Thorny Crack Tear and the Stone Barb Crack Tear are really effective. Anyways, the Flame Shrouding Crack Tear is amazing as well. To get the best performance of this build, we need Forium, Vigor and Endurance, we will level up Strength to 80 and Fate to 60. Golden Bow, Howl of Shabriri and Blood Flame Blade are going to be our main buffs. Moving forward to the next spot, the amazing Dark Rain is breaking the game on style. This baby right here is part of my favorite intelligence build since I started playing the game. The Death Ritual Spear is a very underrated magic weapon, with an incredible unique skill capable of melt the toughest enemies of the game in seconds. There is a reason why people don't care too much about this weapon. The game presents this weapon as a pure intelligence spear with minimum scale values on dexterity and strength, but it turns out that if you split your stats between dex and intelligence, the performance of the weapon will increase dramatically. It is important to be aware that any skill related with projectiles will scale mostly with dex even when in the game it is stated differently. We will need the Death Ritual Spear on plus 10, the Azur's Glintstone Staff to cast our spells faster, or any other you find in your inventory, and any seal we have available to cast our main buffs. The most effective armor set for this build is the Spellblade set, cause it will boost our damage when using the skill by a total of 8%. To boost our damage to the top, we need the Ritual Sword Talisman, the Shard of Alexander, the Magic Scorpion Charm, and the Old Lord's Talisman. This last talisman will increase the duration of our buffs by 30%, which in my opinion is a lot. In our Flask of Wondrous Physic, we will use the Magic Shroud in Crack and the Dexterity Knot Crystal Tear. However, if you need more control in the boss fights, the Stone Barb Crack Tear is always a good option. The next stats will make this build shine. We need 40 on Vigor, 30 on Minor Endurance, 71 on Dexterity, 52 on Intelligence, and 33 on Faith. Golden Bow and Hall of Shabriri will be our main buffs. Glint Blade Phalanx and Terra Magica are perfect support incantations for this build. Before going to the next spot, we have a quick message from today's video sponsor. MMOEXP is the best web service where you can easily acquire as much runes and items as you wish for the best price. Use my code CARLOSEN to get a 5% discount on your purchases. Thanks MMOEXP for sponsoring today's video. Now into the top 5 we have the Hinokami, the God of Fire, a fantastic pyromancer build based on dealing tons of fire damage to conquer the game with ease. I always liked the idea of having the ability of casting fire from my hands like Ghost Rider, but yeah I can't even light a match without burning my finger. So I decided to make my dreams come true using a lot of faith to melt the HP bar of all those bosses using the best fire incantations of Elden Ring. I've covered every possible scenario with this one. We have spells for close range and small enemies, and we have huge AoE attacks to roast the biggest targets of the game like they were a huge beef. Something that I love a lot about fire-based builds is that they look so powerful and stylish at the same time. This build is based mainly on casting incantations, that's why the giant's red braid on plus 10 will be our secondary weapon, just to show some class to the enemies. And our main weapon will be the giant seal on plus 10 that will boost the power of our incantations and will allow us to cast our main buffs. I am using the clean rod set cause it looks fire and has very good defense stats for being a medium weight armor. But you know, use any armor set you like bro. The best talismans for this build are the Ritual Sword Talisman, the Fire Scorpion Charm, the Flux Canvas Talisman and the Godfrey Icon. In our Physic Flask, the Flame Shrouding Crack Tear and the Greenspill Crystal Tear will do the job terribly good. The most optimal stats for this fire monster are 50 on Vigor, 40 on Mind and Endurance and 99 on Faith. Golden Bow and Hall of Shabriri will be your main buffs. Catch Flame, Giant's Flame Take the and Burn O Flame are the incantations I like the most but feel free to choose any other fire 
incantations you'd like to use. Next we are going over one of the most requested builds on my channel, the Night Sorcerer. Obviously this awesome magic build will feature the disgusting Night Comet, a ridiculous spell that most enemies can't dodge. The secret of this spell is that it is partially invisible, which makes the bosses and enemies with dodge features to not be able to avoid the impact of the spell, creating a gap for what is probably the most cheesy jet phone experience I have ever had in this game. Despite of the incredible feature of the invisibility, this spell can deal a ridiculous amount of damage if it's used under the correct build. This build is perfect for a very balanced close mid-range experience, cause you can charge the spell or spam it depending on the scenario you are facing. I will say that I prefer the charged version to deal more damage, but some enemies are so fast that the spamming it ends up being a lot better. To break the game with this build we need 2 staff of loss on plus 25. This weapon has a passive effect over night coming boosting its damage by 30%, and it stacks with another staff of loss granting a huge damage boost. I don't know why they didn't nerf this feature, but I'm glad about it. And we need any seal we have available to cast our main buffs. Feel free to choose any armors that you like, but if you like my drip, I'm using the Alberish robe on its alter version, the traveling gloves and boots, and the festive hood on its alter version as well. The most effective talismans for this one are the ritual sword talisman, the magic scorpion charm, the ghost free icon, and the graven mass talisman. In our flask of wondrous physic, we will use the magic shrouding crack tier and the green spill crystal tier. Smashing all those bosses will be impossible unless you use Thorion Vigor, Thorion Mine, 35 on endurance, 99 on intelligence, and 33 on faith. Golden Bow and Halo Shabridi are going to be your main buffs. And obviously we need Terra Magica and Night Comet which is indeed the main source of damage of the build. We are going to conquer the lightning with this one guys. The God of Thunder is a strength fate build designed to completely obliterate every single enemy of the game in just a few lightning bolts. This build is inspired on the Nordic mythological version of Thor, the God of Thunder, which with a smash of his hammer will surround the skies with the rumbling sound of a thunder. This build is amazing on every scenario since there is not a single enemy on the entire game that is extremely resistant to lightning. For that reason, you can take this build against every single boss and it will perform incredibly good. The best part of this build, in my opinion, is how versatile it is, allowing you to use a lot of incantations and weapons. So don't be afraid of testing around your possibilities with this bad boy. I just made the base for you. We are going to use the Brick Hammer on plus 25 with the Lion's Claw Ash of War on the Heavy Affinity. And we will use the Gravel Stone Seal to get the most out of our incantations and to cast our main buffs. I am going to be using the Caden Armor with the Fire Prelate Gauntlet and the 3 sentinel grips. This way we will have a nice look, similar to Thor, very decent defense stats and enough poise. The greatest talismans for the Thor build are the ritual sword talisman, the lightning scorpion charm, the god free icon and the flux canvas talisman. In our physic flask, the lightning shroud in crack tier and the fade knot will boost our damage by a lot. In order to get the max performance of this build, we need 40 on vigor, 35 on endurance, we need to level up strength to 66 and fade to 83. Golden Bow, Hall of Shabriri and Electrify armament will be our main buffs. Lightning Spear, and Lightning Strike and 40 Sacks Lightning Spear are the best lightning incantations in my opinion, but as I said before, use any other you find useful or fun to play. In the second place of this list of crazy builds, we have Legend, a dual katana build inspired on Let Me Solo Hair, an insane Elden Ring player who spent a lot of time helping thousands of players to defeat Malenia by himself. I respect this guy and his amazing work, but his build can be a lot better in terms of damage. Don't get me wrong, he's the bump, but the build I have for you here deals a lot of more damage than the original one. As I mentioned in a previous video, the power stance moveset of the katanas is one of the best of the entire game. It is so fast and powerful that it's perfect to build up bleed insanely fast and to keep a great style on the gameplay. For this one we need the rivers of blood on plus 10 and the uchi katana on plus 25 with the seppuku ash of war on the occult affinity. And we need any seal we have available to cast our main buffs. To keep the let me solo hair style I am not going to use any armor set at all, I will only use the jar helmet, but this is not optimal for new game plus 7, so feel free to choose any other armor set you like, a samurai one would look really nice. The most powerful Powerful talismans for this amazing build are the Ritual Sword Talisman, the Lord of Blood's Exultation, the Millicent's Prosthesis, and the Rodent Windsor Insignia. If you are missing one of these talismans, the Fire Scorpion Charm is a great option as well. In our Flask of Wondrous Physic, we are going to use the Thorny Crack Tear and the Green Spill Crystal Tear. Because of the high speed of attacks of this build, with this combo we can deal an absurd amount of damage. This build devours stamina, so be sure to craft some Pickle Torten Legs to boost your stamina regeneration speed. To get the most out of this build, we need 40 on Vigor and 35 on Endurance. We need to level up dexterity to 60, faith to 33 and arcane to 70. Golden Bow and Hall of Shabriri are going to be your main buffs. And as the winner of this top we have the Head Smasher, an absolute bone king. This is the type of build that is so fun to play that it's hard to believe it's so powerful at the same time. But as you can see guys this thing is a complete monster. Despite of dealing physical damage only, it is capable to destroy the last boss of the game at the same speed of the Black Tyson or Psycho Fighter builds. This is a fantastic tank build, we have a lot of HP, stamina and strength to just relentlessly attack every everything we would like to destroy so easy. The Head Smasher reminds me of Dark Souls 1 gameplay with the big 
club. Just go around and show some bonk power to anything that appears in your way. Definitely one of the most powerful builds of the entire game. It seems like one more time, Strength took the first place. In this case, we need two large clubs on plus 25 with the Crack Blade Dash of War on the Heavy Affinity, and we need any seal we have available to cast our main buffs. For this build, you can use the Commander's Standard as your aura buff in quick fights. It's better than Golden Vow, but its duration is way shorter. I'm going to be using the Raptor's Black Feathers to boost the power of the Jump Attacks, the Fire Prelate Gauntlets, and the Bull Goat Grips. This way, we will have enough points to avoid getting interrupted while attacking. The best talismans for this build are the Ritual Sword Talisman, the Claw Talisman, the Old Lord's Talisman, and the Rodent Windsor Insignia. But feel free to change this last one for the Dragon Crest Great Shield to get a lot of extra defense. In our Physic Flask, the Green Spill Crystal Tear and the Stone Bar Crack will be extremely effective for this setup. We are dealing only physical damage with this build, for that reason the best body buff is Blood Bowl Aromatic, but if you don't like crafting, feel free to use Howl of Shabriri, the difference is not really significant. This build has amazing stats for every type of player, we need 50 on Vigor and Endurance, a sick 99 on Strength and 33 on Faith. Gold Devour and Howl of Shabriri as always are going to be our main buffs. Let me know in the comment section what do you think of these builds, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to my channel. Have a great day guys, my name is Carlos and I'll see See you in the next one.